The second way to wield the powers of the ages to come is through brokenness. Listen, I'm saying this so you will learn something. Our generation is deceived to think they can use revelation to get anything they are looking for. Our generation is deceived to think they can use prayer and then you come. A lawless man, a proud man comes and prays in tongues because his suit is wet. He now says they will change the territory. A wet suit is not authority. It just shows that you have enough adrenaline. I preach on prayer. I preach on the ministry of the world. But I bring you eternal realities. If your prayer and your study of the world does not provoke brokenness, you are joking. The men that shook the world, find them. They are meek and broken men. I took time to study Billy Graham. And I saw that this man had no notable miracles. He had no bogus words. In fact, when Billy Graham is speaking, all you can sense is a man who loves God. And with that simplistic message, he passed stayed here for decades. When he left this world, he was celebrated as a God that walked among them. When you find the real men of authority, they are broken and they are sinful. When men become too sophisticated, it's a sign that something is being covered. The things that authority is not available to make for, they use strategy and manipulation to cover for it. The real men of authority are broken men. And you can find it again and again in scriptures. In Numbers chapter 12 verse 3, the Bible spoke concerning Moses. He said, he's the meekest of all men that lived. This is a man that came with a staff and destroyed Egypt. I'm telling you why we have all the revelation, yet we have no authority. I'm showing you why we have all the prayer power, all the prayer campaigns, and we have no authority. Because we are high-minded people. We are high-minded people. We are an arrogant generation. We are full of ourselves. I quoted for you from Philippians 3 verse 3. He said, I have no confidence in the flesh. Paul was not a man of revelation alone. Paul was a broken man. Moses was a broken man. When you meet this man, you will meet so much of their humanity that you will wonder, are this the man God is using? The reason is because the power they control it's beyond their reach. It comes from another realm. But when God looks upon their brokenness, He mobilizes Himself. In 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9, He said, The eyes of the Lord moves to and fro the earth, looking for the weak and perfect in heart that He will show forth His strength. Have you not read the books of the fathers of old? Most of them didn't have half the revelations we had. But when they speak, rain stop. When they speak, Bandits go back. When they speak, governments are altered. We show up with all of the bogusness and it shows the strength of our humanity. That's why we cannot change anything. In addition to your prayer, in addition to your revelation, in addition to your competence, I beg you in the name of God, if you want to see through authority, put away high-mindedness. There are most of us here, even to say I'm sorry, we will go to the grave and come back before we say it. And then we'll quote 30 scriptures and think we will handle power with so much pride. He said, God resists the proud, but he giveth more grace to the humble. He resists the proud. When you study David, there are seven anointings that makes the Davidic order. Only one man hosting seven anointings. Any man who operates in the Davidic order must operate in those seven anointings. The first anointing of the Davidic order is the anointing of a poet. The second anointing of the Davidic order is the anointing of a shepherd. The third anointing of the Davidic order is the anointing of a psalmist. The fourth anointing of the Davidic order is the anointing of a prophet. The fifth anointing of the Davidic order is the anointing of a king. The sixth anointing of the Davidic order is the anointing of a warrior. 
and the last anointing of the Davidic order is the anointing of a father. Seven anointings. One man carrying it. But the prophet shows up and said, you have sinned against God. Openly he tore his garment, tore ashes on his head and fell on the ground. He wasn't careful who was looking. Rebuke your leaders here and see what the attention will go to. They are not moved by the correction. They are careful who is seeing how you are rebuking them. They are not angry that you rebuke them, but they are angry how you rebuke them. You would have rebuked them respectfully. You would have done it in the private because of arrogance. A king, a warrior, a prophet, a poet, a psalmist was rebuked openly. He fell down. He said, I've sinned against you, God. Have mercy on me. And he knew the secret. In Psalm 51 verse 17, he said, A contrite heart and a broken spirit thou shalt not despise. He knew the secret of power. That was why David as one man fought 44 battles. He never lost. He doesn't know what it means to lose because there are too many graces. But the way you handle the Davidic mantle is not by revelation. The way you handle the Davidic mantle is not by prayer. The way you handle the Davidic mantle is by brokenness. Because God resists the proud. But he giveth more grace to the humble. If we want to see men that can change government, one signature they must carry is brokenness. Forget all this pride of prayer. Forget all this pride of revelation. We will say it and change nothing. We will prophesy it, nothing will happen. Because the people on the other side of the divide, they know the ordinances. They know what to do to host the spirit that powers them. Only in the church do we negate what is required. When you humble yourself, it takes nothing from you. It rather elevates you.